Hey, doing a little end of the day shopping, huh? See something you like? Yo, still here, huh? Need something else? And she's back. Sneeze lady, what's going on? Hey, so where's that gumbo you said you were gonna get me? That my gumbo? More gumbo? That's what I wanna hear. I'm Lamont. This is my place. So if you got any questions, I'm the guy to ask. Keep looking around. You'll change your mind. No problem. What's the number? Uh, 21-3872. 21-3872. Here we go. That ticket was for a large box of assorted unknown items I bought from Henry Bolay. And, uh, that's all I can tell you. Look, I just don't want to make trouble for anyone, okay? It's a box with a bunch of different things in it, kind of like a grab bag. It's still in the back room. I haven't had a chance to really go through it yet. Hey, is there something else I can help you with? Beads, hula dolls, old books. Got great deals on all of them. No, I met him at the reception at Bruno's house following the funeral. Gave Henry my card, said when he wanted to start liquidating, he should give me a call. Way I hear it, Bruno Bolay didn't have any friends. Mm, but I wish he had been my friend. I mean, didn't look like it, but what he lacked in quality, he made up for in quantity. That house of his is filled with junk. He kept everything. For someone in my business, the place is knick-knack heaven. Who do something some of the more superstitious people around here practice? They think if you mix certain herbs and roots a certain way and drink them, or carry special objects around in little mojo bags, it can give you a supernatural edge in your daily life. All I can tell you is... Hey, I hear ya, but I can't knock it, cause let me tell ya, the stuff I got in here sounds like hotcakes. Somebody thinks it works, so hey, who knows? What makes you ask that? No. I know the legend, of course, and I sure wouldn't mind getting my hands on one of those babies. I mean, I could sell it for a fortune. But no such luck. Funny. I've been thinking about those skulls lately. A lot. Nine. Guess so. Guy I bought this place from wouldn't sell it to me unless I swore I wouldn't change the name. So I didn't. Funny thing was, his name wasn't Zeke either. We're not close personal friends or anything, but I certainly know of him. Comes from one of the wealthiest and most prominent families in New Orleans. And on top of all that, he's a doctor. Guy's gotta be rolling in dough. Must be nice, huh? Just so happens I'm starving, so hey, you got a deal. Mm -mm. That hit the spot. Thanks. Uh-oh. Oh, you're gonna have to excuse me. Just so happens I'm starving. You got a question? Just holler. Outstanding. Just watch the hot sauce. Whatever's in it gives my stomach instant fits. You got a question? Just holler. By the way, that gumbo stand outside, what do you think? Is it pretty authentic? Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. By the way, that gumbo stand outside, what do you think? Is it pretty authentic? Enjoy. Enjoy. By the way, that gumbo stand outside, what do you think? Is it pretty authentic? Take your time. Take your time. By the way, that gumbo stand outside, what do you think? Is it pretty authentic? Sure. What do you need? Sure. Nope. Yes. Could be. Sure. No idea. This is Chaz Milo. You the one who called? About the crystal skull? Yeah? This is Chaz, Milo. Service forwarded your call to my cell. What do you want? I'm at the gym. On the treadmill. It's called multitasking. I told him that skull was authentic. I said all the tests I ran proved the skull had been hand-carved and hand-polished. Probably took decades to make. Then the letter he got must not have been the letter that I wrote. Hey, I'm not saying it's magic or anything. I'm just saying it wasn't made using 19th century, 20th century, or 21st century technology. The thing was pure quartz. No carbon in quartz. No carbon, no carbon dating. Hey, look, I'm going to hang up now. If I try to talk anymore, I'm going to pass out. Hey, look, I'm going to hang up now. If I try to talk anymore, I'm going to pass out. No, just Dr. Bollet. I heard he died recently. Good thing I build him up front. No problem. You've reached Milo Research and Technology. Leave your name and number and a brief message at the beep. I need to talk to Dr. Buford. Could you maybe give me a number where I can reach him? Mmm, never mind. Actually, I guess you can't. Sorry.
Oops, uh, wrong number. Sort of. I mean, it's not a medical emergency. I just... See, I'm only going to be in town for a short time, and Dr. Buford and I have this mutual friend who died recently, and I just really need to talk to him about it. Yes, I need some consoling. That's it exactly. Great. Do you know the address? Did you say Rampart and Dumaine? Thank you. Thank you very much. My loss? Oh, right. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Bye. Hi, my name's Nancy Drew. Is this Professor Hotchkiss? Yes, as a matter of fact, we met a little while back in Wisconsin. Hello, Professor. This is Nancy Drew again. Positive. Could I ask you something? Hi, it's Nancy Drew. Uh, no, I met you at Whitford Castle. No, no, we were both guests there. I found a journal written by Marie Antoinette, which you translated. Remember? But my name isn't... Did a man from New Orleans named Bruno Bollet ever call you? Yes, I know. So did Bruno Bollet call you? Why did he call, if you don't mind my asking? How long ago was that, do you remember? Did he say anything about owning one of the skulls himself? Do you remember what you talked about? And that was the extent of your conversation? Nancy Drew, Wickford Castle? I'm sorry? How much would a crystal skull like the Whisperer be worth? If someone found a skull made of crystal, how could they be sure it's one of the crystal skulls? Modern-day tools would have left marks if the skull was a fake? If tests show that a skull is only a couple of hundred years old, then it's a fake? So the only way to prove that a skull is the real deal is by proving it's not a fake? The idea that the Whisperer can make its owner immortal, do you believe that? Do you know of any relationship between the Whisperer and a crew in New Orleans called the Jolly Rogers? The man who called you about the Whisperer, Bruno Bollet, he was a member of the Jolly Rogers. I just thought maybe one had something to do with the other. In your book, you said that all the people who've ever owned the Whisperer were murdered, yet Bruno Bollet dropped dead of a heart attack. Thanks for your help. I'd better go. Thank you. That's it for now. Still not there. Hi, Bess. Listen, you busy? Bess, hi, it's me. Hi, Bess, it's me. Well, let's see. Since the last time we talked, I was just about getting ready to... Hi, Bess, how you doing? That's still kind of hard to say, but listen. Hi, Bess. Well, I'm glad you asked. That bolt of lightning must have taken out her phone or something. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Bess, what's going on? Hey, Bess, it's Nancy. Just touching bases. Give me a call when you can. See ya. Hello. A lot. Let me start by telling you what happened when I arrived at Henry's house. I walked up to the front door and discovered it was open. So I walked in. Someone dressed as a skeleton wearing a red ascot. Someone dressed as a skeleton wearing a red ascot, although the housekeeper here thinks it really was a skeleton, Mr. Death. But then, she's a little strange. I'm not sure. The room I caught him or her sneaking around in doesn't really contain anything valuable. If I just knew what they were after, I might be able to figure out who Skeleton Man is. I'm not sure. I caught him or her sneaking around the scale model of a cemetery. So if I just knew why they were so interested in it, I might be able to figure out who Skeleton Man is. I'm not sure. I caught him or her sneaking around the scale model of a cemetery, and later I found a tracing of something right by it. So if I could just figure out what it's a tracing of, and what, if anything, it has to do with that model cemetery, I might be able to figure out who Skeleton Man is. Oh, I also found some kind of receipt in the fireplace that may or may not be a clue. Actually, I'm not leaving because they've canceled cab service around here because of the rain. In fact, since I can't go anywhere, I'm hoping you can check something out for me. I found some kind of receipt in the fireplace that may or may not be a clue. That's what I need to find out. See, it's half burned up. All I can read is the receipt number and the name of the place it's from. Zeke's. Why? What do you mean? That's great! So go over there and ask whoever's behind the counter what receipt number 21-3872 is for. Receipt number 21-3872. Just go in and ask what it's for. No big deal. I wouldn't call it snooping. You can do it. Got it. I'll be waiting. Ask about it, Bess, now, before the place closes. Bess, what kind of stuff did Henry sell him? No, no, no. You've got to get into the back room and find out what's in that box. 
Which means you're probably going to have to, you know... You've got to, Bess. The place could close by the time I got down there and tried to do it myself. And knowing what's in that box could be really important. Yes! I mean, no, I mean, Bess, please, just find a way to distract this Lamont guy. Look through the box and leave. You can do that, okay? You've got to, Bess. I have no way of getting down there, and seeing what's in that box could be really important. <laughs> You're the greatest. You really are. I could help you come up with a plan if you want. Okay, try this. That curio shop is filled with souvenirs and oddities, right? Well, look around for something that would immobilize Lamont temporarily, okay? Then, line up a bunch of stuff on a shelf so that when one thing does something, it makes another thing do something else, which makes another thing do something else, you know, like a chain reaction. Right. Yes, you can, Bess. You have to. That's the spirit. Great. Call me when you've looked through that box. What? Really? Did you unlock the box? Well, maybe there's something on those two pieces of paper that'll tell you. Yes, you are. You have to. There could be something really important inside. Bess, please. We've got to be thorough. And you've come too far to give up now. You can do it. I know you can. Awesome. Maybe I can help you. Well, if you change your mind, just call. Okay. My guess is that some kind of code is involved. You said that there are numerical references on the second page? Maybe all that matters is the individual numbers and what order they're in. Try applying the numbers to what Amalinda wrote. Like, if the first number's three, write down what the third letter is. Excellent. Call me back when you're done. Excellent. So what's in the box? Well, call me back as soon as you do. Excellent. Let's hear it. Wow, Bess, that is weird. Did you find anything else? What? Really? Sounds like he or Henry or possibly both are up to something they shouldn't be. Good job, Bess. I'm going to poke around here and see if I can find out anything about a skull called the Whisperer. You better go take care of Lamont. Remember that old photo of a boy and his dog you said you saw in that box of stuff Henry sold to Lamont? Did it look like it was maybe taken in the 1920s? Because I need to find out the name of Bruno Bollet's dog. And if that boy was Bruno, then that was probably his dog. Was there any writing on the picture? That's all it said? Just Bruno? I really need to know the name of that dog. Bess, just get into that box again and see if the dog's name is on that picture. That's all I want you to do. There must be some other way you can distract him. Please, Bess, I can't tell you how important this is. You've got to do this for me. Please? Well, there you go. Hello? He's not at Granny Pumpkin's anymore? Look for a back door. At least that's what I do. Describe the lock. Are you ready for some help? Hi, Bess. How's it going? Then go in, find the skeleton costume, put it on, and get to that meeting. Hi, you find the costume? The crew meeting is about to start. Hurry. Hi, you find the costume? Then quit wasting time and go to that meeting. Did you try to get into the meeting? Suck it up and go, Bess. You'll be fine. Well, scuttled bones. Scuttled bones. Did you find out what that receipt is for? You know what that receipt is for? No kidding. You found out what's in that box? Did you talk to Gilbert Buford? You changed your mind about needing some help? Great. You find the box of stuff Henry sold to the owner? Good work. What's in it? Let's hear it. Want me to try to help you? Not much. Not even close. I'll try. See ya. I'll see you later. What about you? Talk to you later. Think positive, Bess. You're going to do fine. You go, girl. Grant? The dog's name was Grant? Yeah, well, Bruno Bollet was kind of a weird guy. Hey, thanks a lot, Bess. You've been a huge help. I still don't know when I'll get back there, so just kind of hang loose, okay? I will. Bye. But the reason I called is I need you to talk to this doctor named Gilbert Buford, who, as it turns out, likes to hang out at a gumbo stand called Granny Pumpkin's Cajun Cookin', which should be right across from our hotel. He was Bruno Bollet's doctor and apparently his best friend, too. I just need for you to see if he thinks there was anything weird about the way Bruno died. I mean, I kind of think maybe Bruno was murdered. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Everyone's a suspect at this point. Well, oh, I'm sure the guy's fine, but be subtle, just in case. Thanks, Bess. Let me know what happens. Good work. I'll take it from here. Thanks again. 
And I think that about covers it. Good idea. Keep in touch. Bess. Excellent. Thanks for the report. I need you to do something for me. I need you to infiltrate the meeting of the Jolly Rogers crew that's about to be held at Rampart and Dumaine, which has got to be right near Zeke's. You're going to have to look around for it. Now, to get into the meeting, you'll need to put on that Skeleton Man costume you saw in the back room. And once you're in the meeting, you'll need to listen for the name that opens the meeting so you can tell me what it is, okay? Bess, I know you don't like to do stuff like this, but this is really, really, really important, and it'll be the last thing I ask you to do. I promise. You'll find a way in. Oh, and if anyone at the meeting asks, the password is Scuttled Bones. I have an idea. Want to hear it? Atta girl. If you change your mind, just let me know. Okay, you've got your compact, right? Good. Use it to dust the keypad. The smudges that show up will tell you which buttons are part of the combination, and how dark or light they are will tell you the order in which you should press them. I'll be right here if you change your mind. Jean Lafitte. Great. Now, what did Dr. Buford tell you? That must have been when Rene saw Mr. Death. Only I walked in on him and ruined everything. Uh-oh, what? That's all right. Why would you tell him that? Don't worry, I'll be fine. I run into some wasps stung me on every part of my body except my... Ugh, nope, got me there too. I'll explain later, okay? Right now it kind of hurts to talk. No, duh. Whoa, that bolt of lightning was huge. Anyway, why don't you just go relax and I'll be back at the hotel before you know it, okay? Bess? Hello? Bess, you there? Nope, she sure isn't. I need a key to open this door. Locked, naturally. I need to make a tracing. What can I rub on this to make a tracing? To open this, I'm going to need the key. That's not going to do anything. I need some kind of special coin for this. That's not what I need for this. Wonder what goes here. Something goes here, but not that. A painting. That's what goes here. The only thing that would look good here is a painting. How can I make a tracing of this? What I need to make a rubbing of this is some paper and something smudgy, like chalk. I need a little pirate hat. That doesn't look right. Can't open this without the right key. I hate locked doors. Something must be buried here. To see what's under here, I'm going to need a shovel. That doesn't fit. Now what? Wonder what fits in here. No doubt something very strange goes here. I need to put just the right thing on top. If I were this hand, what would I want to be holding? I need to lure Iggy out with something he likes to eat. Iggy won't want that. Talk about a detective's dream come true. The Italian police called me personally and requested that I travel to Italy and help them stake out a suspected thief in Venice. Okay, so they knew someone who knew someone who knew my dad, but still. Unfortunately, what started out as a simple assignment in a city filled with canals, gondolas, and romance quickly morphed into a full-fledged undercover operation, and I soon found myself trapped in a maze of lies, disguises, and danger. Help me find my way out by joining me in my next adventure, The Secret of the Seventh Sword. Venetian Mystery The Clue of the Seven of Swords The Clue of the Seventh Sword the Seventh Sword, The King of Swords, The Mystery of the King of Swords, The Clue of the King of Swords, Carnival Caper, Venetian Carnival Caper, House of Cards, The Clue in the Cards, The Seven Swords of Venice, The Seventh Sword of Venice. What, what is it? Okay. Uh, no thank you. No offense, but yuck. Where am I? Why is it so dark in here? Well, the front door was open, so I walked in, and then I saw this, well, I saw a skeleton. And then he saw me. And then the light started flickering, and he threw something at me that exploded. Oh, the smoke must have made me pass out. I'm sure it was just someone, you know, wearing a costume or something. I'm Nancy Drew, by the way. I came to see Henry. Renee, hold it right there. That skull isn't yours. To say nothing of the fact that you just tried to bury me alive. 
Bruno Bollet wanted Henry to have it. That's why he had Gilbert Buford steal that painting and hide it in Henry's parents' crypt, because he hoped that way Henry would eventually find it. Oopsie, looks like the skull decided it would rather hang with Bernie. The lid's closing and I don't know how to stop it. Here it comes. Renee, a little help, please? Renee, help me, hurry, please. No, you gotta help me. Renee! Renee! Hello? Oh, yes, I am. Thanks for calling me back. Is this Milo Research and Technology? Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. I need to talk to you about Dr. Bruno Bollet and that crystal skull he had you analyze. So please, give me a call as soon as you can. My number is 523-555-4399. Thank you. Are you all right? Well, about the letter you sent to Dr. Bollet, you know, where you told him the skull was a fake? I was just wondering... I never told him that. Never told him what? No, you said in the letter the skull was carved using modern instruments. But the letter Dr. Bollet got said just the opposite. Are you saying the crystal skull is real? Did you carbon date it to see how old it was? Just one more question. Did you send that letter saying the skull was authentic to anyone else? Yeah, well, thanks for your help. Hi, it's just Nancy Drew again. I, uh, I'm not sure why I'm calling, actually. Hope you got off the treadmill okay. Bye. Hi, Nancy Drew again. Bye. <gasps> Ow! Ouch! <gasps> that was a little creepy. That was a little creepy. <gasps> Yikes! Hello, Nancy? It's about time you called. Did you make it to New Orleans okay? Is everything okay? Hey, Nancy, how's it going? Meaning... Hi, Nancy. What's going on? Have you seen Henry? I'm not sure I like the way you said that. Is he okay? Well, then, are you okay? What? Why am I not surprised? Is Bess with you? So tell me about this skeleton man. Anything else missing from the house? You think the missing painting ties in with your skeleton man somehow? Never hurts to keep an open mind. Well, if there is, I'm sure you'll find it. So they threw a smoke bomb at you and ran? What were they leaning over? Good idea. Why did Bruno have a scale model of a cemetery in his house? Why did Henry's uncle have a scale model of a cemetery in his house? Why would Skeleton Man be interested in the scale model of a cemetery? Well, we're not best friends or anything. Heck, we're not really even friends. I just feel sorry for the guy. I mean, he never hangs out with anyone between classes. And when I'd heard there'd been a death in the family, I just wanted to make sure he was okay all by himself down there. That's good to hear. Yeah, I know. I'm not surprised. I get the feeling that what Henry looks like on the outside is just the opposite of what he looks like on the inside. What makes you say that? Why do you think she's staying on? But you don't believe her. How much of Bruno's estate is Henry supposed to get? That's a pretty healthy chunk. He wouldn't be selling stuff on the sly. This Renee person sounds kind of paranoid. What's this kind of good reason stuff? So this Renee person isn't just being paranoid. Why is Henry selling off assets? I thought he was pretty much the sole heir. In what way? She's probably harmless, but stay on her good side, just in case. If it is, I'm happy for him. He always seems so lonely. Sorry to hear that. Wait a minute. Were you eavesdropping? You found a secret passageway? Yeah, I know. Sometimes I think they follow you around. She's high maintenance, huh? Hey, don't I know it. Think he sold off the crystal skull? Can't hurt. And so the search goes on. You're kidding. I thought you said Bess was a disaster when it came to detective stuff. Ah, but this is not snooping. It's sleuthing. You mentioned that he had a high-maintenance girlfriend. So how's she doing? Awesome. Not totally screwing up? That's what I figured. Is that where aliens supposedly scattered a bunch of perfectly formed crystal skulls all around the world like thousands of years ago? And all the skulls have different magical powers? Only now he's dead and another superstition bites the dust. So how did they die? Come on. You don't believe that crystal skull stuff is true, do you? But I'm pretty sure Henry said he died of a heart attack. But didn't he die of a stroke or something? Well, there you go. Natural causes. You've been watching too many of those forensic detective shows. That is interesting. Does Henry know where the skull is? I kind of figured that. Think Bruno told him about the skull? Well, when it comes to murdering someone and making it look like a heart attack, a doctor's got to be right up there when it comes to suspects. So what else is going on? Bruno wore a glass eye? What makes you think finding them will lead you to the skull? Why does that name bring boots to mind? Boots and cheese. He meant eyes with an E instead of an A. Did he lose all these eyes or hide them on purpose? And I thought Henry was weird. Say what? Now I've heard everything. You have got to be joking. Poor Henry. If weirdness is genetic, he doesn't stand a chance. You don't soon forget something like that. A letter? So much for his being murdered. 
If you got his number, you might as well. So go show her the letter and see what she says. You mean someone faked the letter that said the skull was a fake? Good grief. Have you told anyone? Which apparently it is. But still, finding it would be pretty cool. Yeah? You have a big dog or something? How can you make a pet out of an alligator? Well, stay away from him. I like your hands just the way they are. Hey, if you're not sure, you'd better stay away from her, too. You bet. About what? It'd be my pleasure. What do you need? Check out that book that Bruno wrote and pay particular attention to the poem he wrote called A Librarian's Tale. It'll tell you everything you need to know and do. Okay, you'll also have to pay attention to the names and reference numbers of the books mentioned in the card catalog, bearing in mind that Bruno did say his short stories were for tired eyes. But trust me, if you do all that, everything will add up in no time. First thing you need to do is look for the scale model of the cemetery Bruno Bollet kept in his great room. Yes, and if you take a real good look at it, you'll see the crypt you're talking about. Figure out how to open it, and you'll be able to open its life-sized counterpart. Oh, and be sure to take a good look around the scale model, too. You may just find the trace of a clue there. Yes, it's right near where you found that tracing. If you take a real good look at it, you'll see the crypt you're talking about. Figure out how to open it, and you'll be able to open its life-sized counterpart. Know the scale model of the cemetery Bruno Bollet kept in this great room? Well, if you take a real good look at it, you'll see the crypt you're talking about. Figure out how to open it, and you'll be able to open its life-sized counterpart. Oh, and be sure to take a good look around the scale model, too. You may just find the trace of a clue there. Well, if you take a real good look at it, you'll see the crypt you're talking about. Figure out how to open it, and you'll be able to open its life-sized counterpart. That tracing you found should help you. You need to find its life-size counterpart in the real cemetery next door. When you do, take a look at the carvings on it. There's more to them than meets the eye, but you can easily rub out that little problem with some paper and a piece of charcoal. And while we're on the subject, take a good look around that scale model. You may just find the trace of a clue there. In fact, that tracing you found, Skeleton Man or whoever left it there, already did some of the work for you. And while we're on the subject, Remember to take a good look around that scale model, too. Somebody already did some of your work for you. And don't forget that tracing you found. Skeleton Man, or whoever left it there, already did some of your work for you. Figure out how to open the scale model crypt, and you'll be able to open the big one. Just be sure to take a good look around that scale model. You may just find the trace of a clue there. Figure out how to open the scale model crypt, and you'll be able to open the big one. That tracing you found should help you. Well, first you're going to have to lure him out of that vent with something. Like a piece of fruit from the garden, maybe? Then, to get him to bring you that letter, you need to look around for something that's going to clue him into what you're after. The clothes make the iguana, you know. In this case, yep. Well, first you're going to have to lure him out of that vent with something. Like a piece of fruit from the garden, maybe. Then, to get him to bring you that letter, you're going to have to dress him in the appropriate outfit. Neither rain, nor sleet, nor snow, nor gloom of night shall keep the iguana from the swift completion of his appointed rounds. First thing you need to do is go back to Renee's room and take a good look at the wall between her room and Bruno's hideaway. Once you open the chest with the weird symbols on it and read what's inside, what's on the wall will make sense. Well, sort of. But in any case, knowing what to make the dummy say will be all spelled out for you. First thing you need to do is go back to Renee's room and take a good look at the wall between her room and Bruno's hideaway. Then open the chest with the weird symbols on it and read what's inside. Once you do that, what's on the wall will make sense. Well, sort of. But in any case, knowing what to make the dummy say will be all spelled out for you. First thing you need to do is go back to Renee's room and look for the chest with the weird symbols on it. Once you open the chest and read what's inside, those symbols on the wall will make sense. Well, sort of. But in any case, knowing what to make the dummy say will be all spelled out for you. First thing you need to do is go back to Renee's room and open the chest that has the weird symbols on it. Once you read what's inside the chest, those symbols on the wall will make sense. Well, sort of. But in any case, knowing what to make the dummy say will be all spelled out for you. First thing you need to do is go back to Renee's room and read what's inside that chest you opened. You know, the one with the weird symbols on it. Once you do that, those symbols on the wall will make sense. Well, sort of. But in any case, knowing what to make the dummy say will be all spelled out for you. Go back to Renee's room and take a good look at the book that's inside the chest you opened. Once you do that, those symbols on the wall will make sense. Well, sort of. But in any case, knowing what to make the dummy say will be all spelled out for you. Okay, my guess is once all the eyes are in that grid in Bruno's hidden study, you need to turn each one in a specific direction, like up, down, east, west, like that. 
So try looking in the short storybook Bruno wrote. Look for words within and between words and apply them to the eyes the same way you read, left to right and top to bottom. Just don't expect the story you find them in to make a lot of sense. Okay, my guess is once all the eyes are in that grid in Bruno's hidden study, you need to turn each one in a specific direction, like up, down, east, west, like that. So try looking in the short storybook Bruno wrote. Look for words within and between words and apply them to the eyes the same way you read, left to right and top to bottom. Just don't expect the story you find them in to make a lot of sense. Arg! You've got to blast away at the wasps with the smoke pump until not just some, but all of them are stunned at the same time. Just aim and fire, aim and fire as fast as you can. Keep at it. You can do it. My guess is if you turn the hands to specific times in a specific order, you'll be rewarded somehow. See if that short storybook Bruno wrote has anything helpful in it. Remember, you're looking for sequences of numbers from 1 to 12. And be sure to hit the button above the clock face each time you set the hands. Read what it says. Then see if you can find the name of the person to which it's referring in the grave guide that Bruno kept in the great room. When you think you know the name, use your keyboard to write it on the piece of paper. Then find his grave in the cemetery, read the clue that's written there, go back to the grave guide, and repeat the process. Just make sure that every time you think you know a name, you write it down. From the tune it plays when you wind it up, sounds to me like another visit to your favorite arachnid is in order. A spider. Go back out to the fountain, pluck out that tune, and see what happens. Be on the lookout for a bookmarker that has two rows of letters on it. When you find it, take a good look at the paintings and see if something in each painting corresponds to something on the card. If so, you'll be on your way. Remember that bookmarker you found in the book about the crystal skulls? Well, take a good look at the paintings and see if something in each painting corresponds to something on that card. If so, you'll be on your way. If you check out that wall beneath the rod, you'll see that some of the blocks are loose. I suggest you go around to the garden side of the wall and push on those blocks. Do that and you should be a step or two closer to getting that rod. First thing you need to do is find Bruno's shovel. Renee might be able to help you out with that. Okay, now go to the great room and look up the location of Charlie Wicker's grave in the grave guide. Then find his grave in the cemetery, check out the arrows engraved on his headstone, and head for the marsh. The fingers on the shovel will tell you how many steps to take, and the arrows will tell you in which direction to go. When you reach the end, use your shovel and I think you'll be very pleased. Keep your eyes peeled for a book which Bruno Bollet wrote, and once you find it, pay close attention to what he has to say about statues and keys. It's right there in the book that Bruno wrote. The drawing in the chapter about statues and keys will tell you what you need to do. As for how to do it, that's something you'll have to figure out for yourself. Just be sure to use your ears as well as your eyes. You know how when you press one of the buttons around the circle that's in the center of the lid, a specific mark shows up there? Well, by figuring out which button makes what mark, and by pressing the right four buttons, you can duplicate each of the four symbols. That's it! If you look at those books as rows of teeth, with the bottom two rows being baby teeth and the top two rows being adult teeth, the story Bruno Bollet wrote about Quincy T. Booker's teeth will tell you which books to pull down and in what order. Positive. Just remember, dentists refer to teeth according to the patient's perspective, not theirs. Very. Take a real good look at the diagram on the door, then head for the fountain outside. When you find something that looks familiar, start plucking. Get the sequence right and you'll be pleasantly surprised. The key is in the dotted lines. I guess. Bye. Call again, okay? Soon. See ya. You promise? Later. Keep me posted. You got that? Bye, Nance. But I want to hear what you've been doing. Bye, Nan. Call again. Like, soon. Bye, Nancy. Great hearing from you. Keep it up. You'd better. Bye. Adios. My pleasure. Bye. Not a problem. Talk to you soon. You need anything else? Just call. No big deal. See ya. He's kind of worried about you, that's all. Do you mind? You seem so busy. I've been reluctant to bother you. Truth is, I'm never quite sure what to say to someone who's just lost a loved one. Still working on it. Almost done. You look pretty busy. Were you very close to your uncle? Is this the house where you grew up? He made you his executor? You two must have been close. What are you doing, if you don't mind my asking? Yet you came all the way down here for the funeral? Is your great uncle's estate worth very much? Have you had any of his things appraised? He never got married? I sure can. No, I can't. But I'm not going to. Not until I know who that skeleton man was and what he was doing here and why he knocked me out like that. Look, I can understand you're not wanting to call the police, but somebody should investigate. And since playing detective is kind of a hobby with me, I'm positive. 
It's possible, I guess. But I'd like to look around just the same. I'm afraid you're going to be stuck with me for a while. Bingo. You're one heck of a guesser. Why is there an empty frame in the gallery in the other room? Was it valuable? What was it a painting of, do you know? Renee says she noticed the canvas for one of the paintings in the gallery was missing shortly after Bruno died. I found this scrap of paper in the fireplace. Do you know anything about it? Just looking for something that might tell me who that skeleton man was. The box of your great uncle's things that you sold to Zeke's curio shop. That was a no-no, wasn't it? I found a half-burned receipt from Zeke's in the fireplace and did some investigating. I checked out that half-burned receipt from Zeke's that I found in the fireplace. The guy who owns the shop said you sold him a box of assorted items. I am assuming they used to be Bruno's. You sold it because you needed some quick cash in order to keep Summer happy, didn't you? I guess I could just forget all about it. I can't just ignore what you did, Henry. Do you know anything about the crystal skull that was in that box of junk you sold to Zeke's? Are you sure? It would have been inside another box. All I really know for sure right now is that it's missing. How did Bruno die, if you don't mind my asking? Attending physician, Dr. Gilbert Buford, 504-555-9970. Was that Bruno's doctor? Did you know that Bruno was a member of a group called the Jolly Rogers? Maybe not, but I care. They apparently ran around wearing skeleton man costumes. It was actually a crew that disbanded in the early 90s. Why is there a model of a cemetery in the other room? Do you know where I could find some plain paper and maybe some chalk? It's kind of a long story. Do you know where I could find some plain paper? How is she unpredictable? You argue a lot? Do you know what this is? I found it in the other room. I was thinking that maybe my skeleton man left it behind. Interesting keychain. How nice. Do you think I could borrow your keychain? The one that has Bruno's glass eye on it? Actually, all I really want is the eye. I mean, it's just so cool. I won't. I'll be really careful. I promise. If it's on a chain, it can't be that fragile. Especially if you were to, say, do something for me. Well, it's not like you sold off half the estate or anything. How come your great uncle's crypt is in the garden and not in the cemetery? Plain detective is actually a lot more than a hobby with me. I could make a lot of trouble for you, Henry. But if you come clean, tell me about Summer. Do you know what happened to a crystal skull I'm pretty sure your great uncle owned called the Whisperer? So then you threw a bunch of Bruno's things into a box and sold it to that curio shop. Are you sure you don't know anything about it? Do you by any chance know the name of Bruno's dog? I'll let you get back to work. I'm going to keep looking around. I'll check back with you later. I'll stop bugging you now. Why did you try to go out the door? Great. I don't want to hear about it. Forget it. Hey, Ned. Yep, pretty good. Hey, Ned. Oh, yeah. Not yet. He's fine. Well, he's the executor of his great-uncle Bruno's estate, which he's not real happy about. But he and his great-uncle weren't that close, so he's not grief-stricken or anything. He's fine. Well, he's the executor of his great-uncle Bruno's estate, which he's not real happy about. And he's having problems with his girlfriend, but he and his great-uncle weren't that close, so he's not grief-stricken or anything. Other than being attacked on my way into Henry's house by a skeleton wearing a red ascot and getting knocked out by the smoke bomb he threw at me, I'm fine too. Other than my being attacked on my way into Henry's house by a skeleton wearing a red ascot and getting knocked out by the smoke bomb he threw at me, everything's fine. Let's just say that I've stumbled onto a mystery and I'm not leaving till I solve it. Let's just say that I've stumbled onto a mystery and I'm not leaving till I solve it. It's also raining cats and dogs, and there's no cab service, so I'm kind of stuck out here anyway. No, I told her I'd meet her back at the hotel. No, but she has been helping me. Right after Henry's great-uncle Bruno died, someone stole one of the paintings from his gallery, just took the canvas and left the frame. I don't think so. At least no one has said anything. Of course, the only people here are Henry and Bruno's housekeeper, Renee. And this house is so full of stuff. Even if something else was missing, it would be ages until anyone noticed. Nah, yeah, but it is a possibility, I guess. I mean, I have no idea how it ties in, but my gut feeling is there's some kind of relationship between the two. 
Well, it was someone in a costume, obviously. He or she was leaning over something in the great room when I walked in and surprised them. Yeah, I must have interrupted whatever they were doing. Good question. I should probably go look. This scale model of a cemetery. Good question. I should probably ask Henry. A scale model of the cemetery next door. Henry says his great-uncle Bruno made it so he could keep track of who was buried there. Apparently, Bruno used to oversee the cemetery. This scale model of a cemetery, near which I found a tracing of some kind of symbol. I'm thinking maybe Skeleton Man dropped it. A scale model of the cemetery next door. Henry says his great-uncle Bruno made it so he could keep track of who was buried there. Apparently, Bruno used to oversee the cemetery. And, right near the scale model, I found a tracing of some kind of symbol. I'm thinking maybe Skeleton Man dropped it. Good question. Maybe I'll take a real good look around in there and see if I can find out. I'm still trying to figure out how you got to be friends with Henry. Don't worry, he's fine. He's the executor of his great-uncle Bruno's estate, which he's not real happy about. But he and Bruno weren't that close, so he's not grief-stricken or anything. Don't worry, he's fine. A little strange, maybe, but fine. Don't worry, he's fine. Although I think he misses his parents a lot. I saw him out in the cemetery by what I think is their crypt. He seemed pretty upset. You know, you're a pretty nice guy. At least, he's not grief-stricken when it comes to his great-uncle. I think he still misses his parents. A lot. I saw him out in the cemetery by what I think is their crypt. He seemed pretty upset. I think Henry still misses his parents. A lot. I saw him out in the cemetery by what I think is their crypt. He seemed pretty upset. Bruno Bollet's housekeeper, Renee, is still here, despite the fact that she and Henry don't really get along that well. Don't know. I should probably ask her. But you know, she says it's because Bruno paid her in advance. Ten percent of Bruno's estate is supposed to go to her. Only she thinks Henry's been selling off Bruno's assets on the sly. So it wouldn't surprise me if she's staying on so she can keep tabs on him. Thirty percent. Ten percent of Bruno's estate is supposed to go to her. Only she thinks, and with kind of good reason, that Henry's been selling off Bruno's assets on the sly. So it wouldn't surprise me if she's staying on so she can try to bust him. I know for a fact that Henry sold a box of Bruno's things to a local curio shop. Ten percent of Bruno's estate is supposed to go to her. Only Henry's been selling off Bruno's assets on the sly, and somehow Renee found out. I think she's staying on so she can try to bust him. Three words. High-maintenance girlfriend. What this Renee person is, is freaky. She wanted me to drink some strange-looking concoction after I passed out from the smoke bomb. And she wears this weird little pouch around her neck. I'm afraid to ask her what's in it. She wanted me to drink some strange-looking concoction after I passed out from the smoke bomb. And she wears this weird little pouch around her neck. Says what's in it connects her to the energy that powers the universe. She wanted me to drink some strange-looking concoction after I passed out from the smoke bomb, but she refused to tell me what was in it. And she wears this weird little pouch around her neck. I'm afraid to ask her what's in that. She wanted me to drink some strange-looking concoction after I passed out from the smoke bomb, but she refused to tell me what was in it. And she wears this weird little pouch around her neck. Says what's inside it connects her to the energy that powers the universe. I overheard Henry talking to someone named Summer. Is that his girlfriend? Unfortunately, I got the feeling their relationship is making him more unhappy than happy. No, I mean, not on purpose. I mean, I was in this secret passageway and I could hear him through the wall. I couldn't help it. I'm always finding secret passageways. You know that. Henry confessed that he sold off some of Bruno's things because he needed money to keep his girlfriend Summer happy. Extremely. You're so lucky. I don't know. Guess I should ask him. I don't think so, no. He acts like he's never heard of the crystal skull. I have been having Bess do some sleuthing for me. I never said that. I mean, I may have said she wasn't particularly adept at snooping. Exactly. Did I tell you that Henry confessed to selling off some of Bruno's things because he needed money to keep his girlfriend Summer happy? Trying to keep up with all her crazy demands is making him nuts. You're so lucky. You know Bess, when she puts her mind to something, there's no stopping her. She's doing awesome. Okay, maybe not awesome, but she's certainly, uh, you know. Right. Are you familiar with the legend of the so-called crystal skulls? 
Something like that, yeah. Apparently, Henry's uncle was the proud owner of the Whisperer, the skull that was supposed to make whoever owned it live forever. Maybe, maybe not. See, this book I found in Bruno's library said no one who has owned the Whisperer has ever died of natural causes. They were all murdered. Absolutely not. I'm not sure what I believe yet. But right now, what I think doesn't matter. The people who knew Bruno had the skull, if one of them believed in the Whisperer's power, they may have figured the only way they'd ever be rid of Bruno was to cause his death. Heart attack. Heart attacks can be induced. That may be, but what's really interesting is the skull is missing. And I'll bet you anything that's what my bony friend in the red ascot was looking for. I haven't gotten around to asking him about it yet. He doesn't know anything about it. At least that's what he says. But if that skull is still around here, I intend to find it. Bruno Bollet's doctor, Gilbert Buford, was apparently Bruno's best friend as well. I don't know. Guess Bess should ask him. Yes, in fact, Dr. Buford told Bess that Bruno showed it to him once. But apparently he told Bruno the skull was bogus, and Bruno got a little ticked off. Never showed it to him again. Don't worry, I've been thinking the same thing. In order to find that crystal skull, it looks like I'm going to have to find all of Bruno's glass eyes. He wore a lot of glass eyes. Not all at once, of course, but from this box I found in his study, it looks like he had at least 25. Something Bruno said to Professor Hotchkiss, whom I've met before, by the way, in Wisconsin. Did I ever tell you about her? Anyway, it turns out she's an expert on the crystal skulls. So Bruno called her once, and when she asked him if he knew where the skull called the Whisperer was, he said, the eyes have it. Right. I'm pretty sure he hid them on purpose. Get this, Bruno had a pet iguana that he liked to dress up in little costumes. I kid you not, I found little outfits for Iggy, that's the iguana's name, Iggy, in Bruno's study. He could dress him up like a mailman, an optometrist, or a pirate. No, you haven't. Iggy also hides things in the vents, and depending on what outfit he's wearing, he'll go into the vent and bring out different stuff. Like, I dressed him up as an optometrist, and he brought me out a glass eye. Like, I dressed him up as a mailman, and he brought me out a letter. Like, I dressed him up as a pirate, and he brought me out this little Jolly Roger box. Remember how I told you that Bruno liked to dress Iggy the Iguana in different outfits? Well, get this. I'm pretty sure a letter caused Bruno Bollet to have that heart attack. Apparently, Bruno and Rene had recently taken the crystal skull to a lab to see if it was authentic. The lab guy mailed Bruno a letter summarizing his test results, which showed the skull was a fake, and when Bruno read it, I think the shock was just too much for him. Actually, that's not quite true. I'm thinking about calling the lab guy, just to be sure. I'm not so sure. Rene told me she didn't know anything about Bruno's crystal skull, yet the letter from the lab guy indicates otherwise. I don't know. Renee says it was her idea to get the skull tested. And she lied to me before, when she denied Bruno had told her about the skull. I'm thinking about calling the lab guy, just to be sure. When I called the lab guy, he said that in his letter, he told Bruno the skull was authentic. Yep, which means Bruno more or less did die at someone else's hand. No, and I don't think I'm going to. For one thing, I don't want to tip my hand. For another thing, I don't want anyone thinking that skull is the real deal after all. The only thing those lab tests proved is that the skull is at least 300 years old, not that it has magical powers or anything. Remember the letter I told you about, the one from the lab guy that probably caused Bruno's fatal heart attack? Well, while I was picking mushrooms for Rene, I almost lost my hand to one of Bruno's pets, a big alligator named Bernie, apparently by exploiting their fondness for marshmallows. I can't quite figure out whether Rene neglected to tell me about him by accident or on purpose. Think you could give me a hint? I could use a hint. Feel like giving me a hint? How about a hint? There's a book in the library that's locked. Any idea how to open it? Everything? Where can I get the key to that big crypt in the cemetery? The one with the interesting carvings on it. He had a scale model of the cemetery? Yeah. One of the crypts in that scale model cemetery is locked. How do I go about opening it? Paper and charcoal? How do I go about opening a mini crypt that's part of Bruno's scale model? Where can I get the key to that big crypt in the cemetery? The one that's the life-size version of the locked scale model crypt I asked you about? How can I get Iggy to retrieve the letter Dr. Buford thinks Bruno Bollet was reading when he had his heart attack? They do? 
I bet if I get that dummy I found in Bruno's hideaway to make the right sounds, I'll be closer to finding that crystal skull. But what are the right sounds? And what's the right order? I've got all 25 of Bruno's glass eyes. But now what? I'd like to pick a loquat from the tree in the garden, but those darn wasps won't let me. Help! Any idea what the deal is with the clock in the hallway? The one with the hands that just beg to be turned? What am I supposed to do with a piece of paper I found in the head of that dummy in Bruno's study? Do you know? I know the jack-in-the-box in Bruno's study has something to do with finding one of his glass eyes, but I don't know what. Do you? What's an arachnid? I was kind of afraid of that. I have a feeling the paintings in the great room need to be arranged a certain way. Any idea what that certain way is? The rod that's called for in that blueprint. Any suggestions as to how to remove it from the fence in the cemetery? I could use some help figuring out that steps in the right direction story in the Tired Eyes book Bruno wrote. I got Bruno's shovel, but I'm not sure what to do with it. I got Bruno's shovel, but I'm not sure what to do next when it comes to figuring out that steps in the right direction story in Bruno's Tired Eyes book. When it comes to those buzzard statues in the garden, I know I'm probably supposed to make the feathers of that one buzzard form a certain pattern. But how am I supposed to know what that pattern is? Can you tell me how to go about opening that chest in Renee's room? That's it? I can't figure out what the deal is with those books in the library that I can pull down but not out. Any thoughts? Are you sure? That's important. I'd sure like to find the key to the door that's at the end of that secret passageway. Any suggestions? How do I know what the right sequence is? That game with the little square and the marbles and the light beams is driving me nuts. Please say you can give me a hint. Bounce the bottom marble off the side and top and block the first beam. Okay. And once I get to the other side? <sighs> Actually, I'll call you later, okay? I'll call you back, I promise. Bye. I'd better get going. Okay, bye. Never mind, I'll call you later. Bye. On second thought, I'll call you back, okay? Promise. Bye, Ned. That's about it. Got it. Bye, Ned. I changed my mind. Talk to you soon. I changed my mind. Okay if I call you later? Don't worry, you will. Later. Bye, Ned. Nothing more to report. I'll try. See ya. On second thought, the hint can wait. See ya. That's it for now. I will. Talk to you soon. Nah, forget the hint. I'll call you later, okay? Thanks for your help. Great. I really appreciate it. Sounds good. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks for the advice. Now. It's a little wet out here. Looks like you like to grow things. I'm sorry, I forgot. I'll do it right now. Oops, I forgot. Still working on it. There's nothing quite like cooking with fresh herbs, that's for sure. So you're still doing the cooking even though Bruno Bollet is gone? I haven't really talked to him yet. We talked. Did I detect a little animosity between you two back there? Won't all of Dr. Bollet's belongings go to Henry anyway? What kind of belongings? I picked those mushrooms for you. What was in that concoction you wanted me to drink after I got knocked out? If you don't like Henry that much, how come you're still here? Have you ever seen this before? I found it by that scale model of the cemetery that's inside the house. Did Dr. Bollet ever say anything to you about a crystal skull? He may have referred to it as the Whisperer. Why is there an empty frame in the gallery inside? What can you tell me about the painting that's missing from the frame in the gallery? If you don't mind my asking, what's in that little pouch you wear around your neck? Oh, were you in the house when Dr. Bollet passed away? Dr. Buford remembers seeing a letter in Bruno Bollet's hand the day he died. Could he have had a heart attack while he was reading his mail? I understand that Dr. Bollet had some interesting pets, like an iguana. Do you know how he went about training them? Did he ever teach you how to make them do their tricks? I think I found the letter that Dr. Bollet was reading when he had his fatal heart attack. Iggy the iguana had taken it. Apparently, Dr. Bollet did have a crystal skull and believed possessing it would make him immortal. So he had it tested, and the lab sent him its findings in this letter. Read the second paragraph. My guess is Dr. Bollet believed in the skull so completely that when he read it was a fake, he was totally devastated, and his heart just stopped. But what I don't quite understand is, why did you tell me you didn't know about the crystal skull when this letter indicates you did? 
What made Dr. Boulay decide to have the skull authenticated? Do you have any idea where the skull's hidden? Do you by any chance have some plain paper and anything like chalk that I could use? I know, I'll help you. That way you'll get done faster. I really appreciate this. Do you by any chance have some plain paper that I could use? Something like that. No, it's nothing like that. Right here. That shovel over there with the interesting handle. Do you think I could borrow it? You mean like tree roots? I could dig you up some roots. This shovel with a weird handle. Do you think I could borrow it? I'd be happy to pick them for you. What do you need mushrooms for? Deal. <sighs> if you insist. Actually, picking the one growing on the log sticking out of the swamp was a little hairy. Sure did. If by Bernie you mean the alligator that almost had me for dinner, yeah, you did. Whose boat is tied up down there by Bernie, do you know? Those weird symbols on the wall in your room, do you know who painted them? A spirit. What was the word? What was he doing by the front door? How was it that Gilbert was able to just walk right in like that? Gilbert recalls seeing a letter in Dr. Bollet's hand, as if he had keeled over while reading his mail. Whose boat is tied up down there where the bayou comes up to the cemetery, do you know? Did Dr. Bollet by any chance ever mention the name of his dog to you? I'll leave you to your potting. I'll see you later. Nice talking to you. I'd better get going.